Imagine you're drifting in the middle of the ocean, roughly 4,900 feet below the surface. At that depth, everything familiar vanishes. The once adorable creatures from coral reefs have turned into something far less charming. Their bodies stretch like rubber, their eyes either balloon to monstrous proportions or disappear completely. And then tentacles begin to sprout from places no creature should ever grow tentacles. It's as if evolution itself injected a faulty gene directly into their DNA. And among all the bizarre life forms down there, squids are the most profoundly corrupted of them all. Some become transparent like glass, others grow horn-shaped hooks instead of suction cups. And a few living even deeper than the giant squid have transformed into things so unsettling that just seeing them is enough to make you shiver. Why do creatures become stranger the deeper we go? And why are squids in particular so vulnerable to this evolutionary distortion? To find out, we first have to understand exactly where they live in that world of endless darkness. From light to shadow. At the ocean's surface lies the epipelagic zone, where sunlight still penetrates to a depth of about 650 feet. Here, life thrives on photosynthesis, and squids still look normal. These are the reef squids, small, quick, and graceful, moving in shimmering schools near the surface. But as you descend into the mesopelagic zone, also known as the twilight zone, the world begins to fade. Between 650 and 3300 feet, the dim light only outlines vague silhouettes. This is where the strangeness begins. The firefly squid glows brilliantly blue thanks to bioluminescent organs, symbiotic bacteria that emit light used for communication and attracting prey. Go deeper and the transformations grow more dramatic. The glass squid becomes nearly invisible, as if made from crystal. Its body is filled with gelatinous tissue, soft water-laden material that cushions it from the crushing pressure of the deep. Its ghostly eyes float inside its transparent form like two disembodied lanterns in the dark. But these creatures, as strange as they seem, are not yet terrifying. The true boundary of fear lies near the end of the twilight zone, where glowing life fades and cold-blooded predators rise. Around 3,000 feet down the Humboldt squid Dositicus gigas emerges. Stretching over 6 feet long and weighing up to 100 pounds, it's the first squid in its family to develop sharp, horn-like hooks strong enough to rip through fish flesh. They're cannibalistic predators attacking fish and even weaker members of their own species. Fishermen call them red devils, and for good reason. When hunting Humboldts don't go alone, they coordinate in organized packs, flashing red and white signals across their skin, a biophysical language, controlled by millions of chromatophores and iridophores pigment cells that can instantly shift color. It's a system of electrobiological communication that humans still can't fully replicate. They can move at up to 25 miles per hour faster than the world's best human swimmers. And though they can injure divers, they rarely attack humans. Their diet mostly includes shrimp crabs and other squids. Yet with their crimson glow in the darkness, their pack tactics and their razor-edged beaks, Humboldts mark the first real turning point, the moment the ocean's beauty tips into terror. Ghosts beneath the midnight zone. Dive deeper still into the bathypelagic zone and all light disappears. This is the midnight zone stretching from roughly 3,300 feet down to more than 13,000 a world drowned in absolute blackness. Here lives one of the strangest creatures ever discovered. Promachotuthis sulcus more hauntingly known as the squid with human teeth. Just one look at its photo is enough to feel as if something from the abyss is staring back. In truth, those teeth aren't teeth at all, but soft tissue folds surrounding its hard beak structures that may help it grip and tear small planktonic prey. Still, the image is deeply unsettling. Only a single specimen has ever been found less than an inch long dredged up from the South Atlantic. Like a secret lost in darkness, Promacatuthis reminds us that the deeper we descend, the more life abandons the boundaries of imagination. At the bottom of the midnight zone, roughly two and a half miles beneath the surface, lives the largest member of the cephalopod family, the giant squid, Architeuthis ducks. It can reach lengths over 45 feet, about the size of a two-story bus, and its eyes are as large as dinner plates, the biggest in the entire animal kingdom. The giant squid is an ambush hunter. It waits motionless in the dark, then strikes forward with a blast of jet-propelled water. Its two primary tentacles, twice the length of its body, are ringed with serrated suckers lined by tiny horned teeth. 
The beak at the center of its head is hard enough to cut through bone and is often the only part that survives after being swallowed by a sperm whale. Those circular scars that cover sperm whale skin, their battle marks the first proof that the mythical Kraken of Norse legend was rooted in something very real. If you like this content, please like and subscribe to help our videos be positively evaluated by the YouTube algorithm. Battle in the Dark Deeper still lies the abyssal zone between 13,000 and nearly 20,000 feet down. Here, the temperature hovers around 33 degrees Fahrenheit. There is no light, the pressure is a thousand times greater than at the surface, and life moves as if trapped inside a dream. No plants, no sunlight, only marine snow, the slow, endless rain of dead plankton, and organic dust drifting down like the ashes of the ocean. Among the few survivors is Asperotothus acanthoderma, a delicate squid over 15 feet long with a body so thin and translucent, it looks like a floating ribbon of glass. It hunts by sensing minute shifts in pressure through its thread-like arms, a primitive version of sonar perfectly tuned for the silence of the deep. At the very bottom of this world drifts the heavyweight of the squid family, the colossal squid Mesonychotuthis hamiltoni. Unlike its cousin Archituthis ducks, it's shorter but far thicker and heavier, around 35 feet long, weighing over a thousand pounds. Its suckers carry rotating hooks like miniature drills, and its eyes 11 inches wide larger than a softball can detect even the faintest glint from nearby prey. Its beak can slice straight through bone, and its flesh is infused with ammonia-rich compounds that keep it neutrally buoyant, allowing it to hover without burning energy. In the frozen darkness of the southern ocean, it is the perfect ambush predator. If the giant squid and the colossal squid ever faced off the outcome would be impossible to predict. The giant is faster, more flexible. The colossal heavier, thicker. Skinned and armed with spinning hooks instead of simple suckers. In close combat, the colossal squid would likely dominate through sheer muscle and armor. But they never meet, because they live in two different worlds, the giant squid in warmer oxygen-rich waters and the colossal squid in the icy depths around Antarctica. The only thing they share is an enemy, the sperm whale physitor, Macrocephalus. These massive hunters can dive more than 6,500 feet using echolocation to hunt in the dark. When they surface, their skin bears the scars of circular suckers and twisting hooks, proof of titanic battles between leviathans. Inside their stomachs, scientists often find squid beaks the only part that survives digestion. From those we know, every scar on a whale's skin is a line in the ocean's diary. The bottomless abyss. Below everything else lies the Hadal zone starting at 20,000 feet and plunging to over 36,000 at the Mariana Trench, the deepest known point on Earth. This is a world where sunlight never existed. The pressure here is more than 1,100 times that of the surface enough to crush any creature with a hint of air inside it. Only a few life forms endure pressure-loving bacteria called pezophiles, tube worms, snailfish, and one legendary cephalopod Magnapinna sp. The Big Fin Squid. This creature stretches nearly 20 feet long, though most of that length comes from its arms and tentacles thin as threads hanging down like drifting wires in the water. No one has ever captured a living specimen. No one has ever seen a mature adult. All we have are a few blurry frames recorded by a NOAA deep sea ROV in 2001. Magnapinna moves like a ghostly kite suspended in still water. It doesn't swim. It floats holding its arms at right angles, manipulating the currents with precise puppet-like control. Its colorless glassy skin renders it invisible even to creatures that produce their own light. Though unconfirmed biologists believe this eerie stillness is a survival strategy, in the deep even a single wasted motion could mean death. What we don't yet know. Magna Pinna may not be dangerous to humans. What terrifies us is not the creature itself, but the void of knowledge it represents. These squids live in places untouched by the light of science. We know more about the moon than we do about the deep ocean. In fact, humans have explored less than 5% of the seafloor, meaning there could be dozens of undiscovered squid species out there, perhaps some even larger than Archituthis ducks. Some oceanographers believe there might be giant versions of big fin squids moving so slowly that submarines could pass right beside them without ever noticing. 
It sounds like fiction until you remember that both the giant squid and the colossal squid were discovered not by sight but by the scars they left on whales. So, if there are creatures beneath those black waters, older stranger and far larger than we imagine, are we truly ready to meet them? Perhaps the most frightening thing about the ocean isn't what we see, but what might be watching us back. Somewhere within those thousands of miles of black water, there could be beings science has never named creatures, so still and vast, that a single movement could erase a passing ship from existence. We know more about the moon, about Mars, even about distant exoplanets, millions of miles away yet we remain blind to our own ocean lying silently beneath our feet. Every scar on a whale's skin is a witness to battles no human has ever seen. Every flake of marine snow is a memory of life slowly fading. And maybe every shadow that drifts beneath a submarine's light is a reminder that humanity is still just a traveler standing at the edge of the world. If Magna Pinna truly exists, then how many more species are still out there? Larger, older, and infinitely patient, waiting in silence. The ocean doesn't hide its secrets. It simply isn't ready to share them yet. So hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell because in the next episode we'll descend into another realm entirely, the kingdom of the jellyfish that can make even the deep sea tremble. Because in the ocean, the only thing more terrifying than what we've seen is what we never have.